Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is get hit result under cursor? If I run through my quick little example here, we have my little cursor moving around. If I click over this cube, it's going to tell me cube or sphere or cone or the floor. If we click on our player, we get no result. If we click down here through our player, we're still not going to get the player. We're going to see the floor. So let's go ahead and look at the node, which in this case, there's two of them, how they work and what we'd use them for. The get hit result under cursor by channel node is part of our player controller. So we're going to need a player controller as our input target. And then we basically need to determine what we're going to be looking for. Now this is going to use our hit result check on either a trace channel for checking my channel or a trace type, an object type, if we're looking for object. Let's look at the channel one first. And this is our basic standard visibility channel trace types. By default, we have visibility and camera. Those are our visibility or trace channels, basically. If we go under project settings and then we go to collision, we'll find our object and trace channels. By default, you have visibility and camera. Those are our default trace channels. If we look here, we have no additionals. Down here, under object types, we have our default object channels, static, pawn, physics, vehicle, etc. Because we have no extra object channels. This is your collision type. If we were to look at this mesh and we were to go to his collision and we look at his presets, we're going to find an object type. You can see it's pawn. This is our object type right here for our object check. And then you can see the trace channel right here under trace responses where we have visibility and camera. This also should hint at why we have an issue when we click on the player, it didn't respond. The channel you use here or the object type you use here is what it's going to check against. And it's going to check against the blocking section here. Our output is going to be a hit result. It's a standard hit result. So we know what we hit and then a true or false return value on if we hit anything. Right now, my player, so both my capsule component and the mesh that make up my player, for the collision type, ignore visibility. But my check right here is against visibility. That's why it ignored the player. For the object type, I'm going against world static. Let's go ahead and hook this up instead. We're going to check our object this time, and we'll hit play. And we'll click on things. You'll notice my cube, my sphere, my player doesn't respond, and my floor responds again. That's because we are checking against world static. And if we look at our item and we find its collision settings, we will find that it is going to respond. Well, we need to change this to custom so we can see. World static is the object type. If we were to change, say, our sphere, so let's go to custom and change our sphere to be a dynamic object type. And we go ahead and we hit, whoops, play. And we look, now our sphere doesn't respond. Our cube does, but our sphere does not. That's because, again, our sphere is of object type world dynamic. And we are checking for the hit result under the cursor for only world static objects. And that's it. That's basically our get hit result under cursor nodes. They're basically going to connect to our player controller, grab the current cursor position, do a trace check under that in world space and screen space, see if it's either against a visibility, I keep saying visibility, but a trace channel or an object type and output a hit result as long as a return value of if it hit anything or not. So for example, I could just simply hook this up here and this will tell us if it hit anything. Like right now it's hitting nothing. It's hitting something, nothing, something, nothing, something. And remember back to what our player is. Our player is a pawn. I could always add another pin to help to check against the pawn this time and world static. And now you'll see our player itself should respawn right there. Now we have our get player, our game player character is responding when we click on our player character. That item's there. There's our player character and such. And that's it. That's going to wrap up our get hit results under cursor by channel nodes. 
uses for this will be if you want to, for example, in this case, I'm pressing my left mouse button and I want to see what's under it. This will give you the results of what's under it. Since this is done inside of our player controller and not in our UI, we don't have to reply, rely on any UI elements to check for hits. This simply casts into our world and sees what we hit.